hello, I hear. Just getting going. Thank you for hanging out and waiting. We're about to get started. Hello, here we are. I made it. I'm live. I think the BGM is muted and I don't know why. There we go. There we go. Hello! It's Saturday. It's Saturday. That means that it's a music stream day. We're here. We're here. Music stream day. Yeah, today's music. We are, uh, we're gonna uh, start a, a brand new song. Um, that is gonna be totally from scratch. We, uh, because we finished the song we were working on last time. It's live. It's up on YouTube. It got a ton of views. People seem to like it. It was a lot of fun. Um, and so today is music. I don't have a meme thing, so we're gonna be working on a um, on a uh, a new original track, probably for the album. I'm gonna use a synthesizer you haven't seen me use before. It's one I actually haven't used before. I uh, I only got it recently. It's made by Cow Audio, so that'll be fun. We'll get to explore it and figure it out together. Um, I think that'll be a fun time. Uh, let's see, let's see what else. My, my mouth, as you are aware, if you were here for Hotline Miami the other day, you know I had oral surgery. My mouth is doing a lot better. Yesterday it hurt a lot, like a lot. But today it's doing a lot better. Um, so I'm healing. Things are good. Uh, so I, I'm not really having issues talking or anything today. So that's nice. We can hang out. We can stream. I can be a blabbermouth. Uh, let's see. What else is going on? Um, oh, I have exciting news. If you... Yes, mouth recovery stream indeed. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I have exciting news. Even though... We are still nine followers away from Twitch Affiliate, which lets us use custom emotes right in Twitch. I have signed up for 7TV. I did this last night, and it means that uh, we can use some custom emotes. I only have one in there, but if you use 7TV, you now have Skylark a Dumpy. Skylark a Dumpy in the chat. I'm very excited about it. I'm gonna make a wiggly. Uh, I've got the dumpy. We're gonna get some non-animated ones probably, but like, I have to figure out what I'm gonna do. I gotta make some. I'm gonna bug Giselle to make some. Maybe I'll commission some or something. I don't know. I don't know yet. But emotes, we got them. But only if you use 7TV. But uh, yeah, I dig it. So how are you? How are you all doing, Giselle Toxon? How are you guys doing? I like that every time I take a sip of water, I go kind of crazy. Ice cream and being lazy, very nice. That is a perfect way to spend a Saturday, if I'm being honest. Ice cream, kick back. Listen to some streamers. <laughs> irresponsible Lego purchases. I mean, it might be irresponsible, but those are like the best kind of purchases, you know? Because now you get to build some awesome Legos and hang out and chill and like, just, just like build your Legos and forget about how much it costs. That's, that's what Legos are for. Yeah, exactly. I love irresponsibility. I, I recently bought a robot mop. I couldn't really afford it when I bought it, but oh my god, it is the absolute best purchase I have ever made. Like, I don't know, maybe that pegs me as an old or something, but look, 
I have a den to take care of. I just got new flooring in the den that needs mopping. And the robot mop is the most adorable thing of all time. Maybe I'll maybe I'll post a video of it on Twitter or something next time it runs because it's incredible. Like it's just this little square and it rolls around and it squirts the floor and then it mops it all up. And the best thing is I don't have to mop anymore, which is incredible. I just can hang out and watch this very adorable robot if I want. And otherwise, like, it's so quiet. I could have it mopping while I was live on stream and you would never know. I could be mopping right now. It doesn't have googly eyes, but I have actually thought about getting some googly eyes to put on it because I think that would be absolutely fantastic. Like, googly eyes are something that mo more robots need in our world. Googly-eyed robots. That's uh, definitely a good thing. Ooh. Robot decor. We could make a stream out of that, yes. Mm. Mate is so good. I need that caffeine. Um, let's see. Other fun stuff. Other fun stuff. I've been... Uh, I don't know... If y'all are interested in, like, spooky stuff and weird stuff, but, uh, I kind of get into it in phases. I don't know if I believe in any paranormal anything, but I really enjoy it, as an, an, at least as entertainment. And I'll tell you what, I, uh, I've seen it before, but I recently rewatched the Planet Weird series Hellier about, uh, well... I mean, I don't even know how to summarize what it's about. So it's, it's this, if you haven't heard of it, Planet Weird is this this thing run by Greg and Dana Newkirk. They're like paranormal investigator type people. They run a paranormal museum. And um, Hellier is this series that's like documenting this paranormal investigation that they went on that started out as an investigation of Kentucky goblins. Like, if you've ever watched any like weird late night history channel tv or anything you might have heard of this like kentucky goblins case in the like 1950s or 30s or something like a long time ago um where these people reported that there were these weird goblins laying siege to their house in rural kentucky and they have, and they like fled the house and the police said they saw the goblins and it was this whole crazy weird thing like who knows what it actually was? Well, this this series Hellier is about the Newkirks. They get this uh, they get this email, this mystery email, from a man who is similarly claiming to be besieged by goblins in Kentucky. And so they're like, "All right, this is really weird. Don't know if we believe in goblins, but let's let's check this out." So they go and they start an investigation. And it's two seasons long so far. They're working on season three and it starts out and they go and they look, they're looking for like evidence of goblins in Kentucky, like some sort of like cryptid or something. And then it very quickly turns from an investigation about goblins to an investigation about aliens. And then it turns from an investigation about aliens to an investigation about what's what they call ultra terrestrials which is like some weird like Mothman prophecies stuff like the ultra terrestrials are from the Mothman prophecies it's man it's just so weird and it's like super spooky yeah 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 the guy like the, he emails them a bunch of times and then he just stops and then they lose contact with him completely it's 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 spooky and it's weird and it's like Maybe this is all faked. Maybe it's somebody playing an elaborate prank on these people. But whatever is going on in this series, it is very spooky. And it, the, the thing that I love about it, whether or not you believe it, which again, I, I, I'm, I'm generally very skeptical about stuff like this. But the series is enormously entertaining. And it is like very enjoyable to watch all of this weird spooky stuff happening and like 
it seems like the people who are doing the investigation at least absolutely believe in it whether or not you believe in it or it's real they definitely believe it and it's interesting to watch these people who are absolutely like believing in what's happening to them and even if you're a skeptic to just watch it and be like whoa what what if what if this is real like even if a fraction of this is real what does that mean for the world and i don't know it's just it's fun it's fun and interesting to think about it it's really entertaining whether you watch it and think of it as fiction so i've been watching hellier i've been thinking a lot about like mothman and the aliens and ultra terrestrials and ghosts and big feet and spooky stuff Mostly just for fun. I'm on I'm on a kick. I was on a horror movie kick a couple months ago, and now I'm on a weird paranormal entertainment kick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's exactly like that. Giselle says, It's like, what if the guys from Ghost Adventures, Adventures went on a case, and the case turned out to not be about ghosts, and instead became about alternate dimensions? And that's literally, that's hellier. It's like all about... Like, we start looking for cryptozoological crypto goblins, and now all of a sudden we are talking to interdimensional traveling aliens from outside of space-time. It's... Woo! It's, it's very odd and very fun. So yeah, if you like weird stuff hard recommend that you check out Hellier. And the nice thing about Hellier is it's free on YouTube. Um, you can watch both seasons of it for free on YouTube. You can definitely binge it in a day or two. That's what I did. I, I binged it over uh, the last week, over a couple of days. Um, but yeah, definitely worth it. Check it out if you're into that kind of thing. Um, yeah, Giselle also recommending it in the chat. So that's how you know it's good. That's how you know it's good. Giselle with her impeccable taste. She's a legend. Um, yeah, so that's that's what's going on in my life. We uh, we are here to make some music though. So let's let's get started. Let's do some let's do some jams. We're uh, we're gonna zip over to Reaper here. All right. So as you can see, we have a a totally blank reaper. It's empty. And uh, we gotta get started. So, am I, am I kinda laggy today? I feel like I might be kinda laggy all of a sudden. I don't know. Hmm? 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 I feel like I opened up Reaper and I got very laggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Maybe... Um... Maybe I'll restart Reaper. Here, let's, uh... Let's go back here. No, nothing's updating. Nothing's updating. Let's go back here. I'm gonna restart Reaper and see if that helps. Because there's nothing in it. It's just, it's just, like totally empty reaper and nothing is updating it should be totally fine all right let's see let's see let's see let's see mm -hmm. and it was like reaper was open before i just wasn't tabbed into it no it looks like the lag is still there i don't know what's causing that nothing has changed uh huh Oh look, I, I tabbed into Chrome, and now it's better. Go back to OBS, and now we have lag in o when I'm in OBS, which I was in OBS that whole time. And now suddenly, we're getting lag. You know, we're just gonna deal with the lag because I don't know what's causing it, and I wanna stream, and I wanna make music, and I don't wanna sit here troubleshooting with you guys. Um, so let's let's jump over to Reaper. So we're gonna do, since I rebooted, I gotta do this again. We're gonna go file, project templates. I have a stream template 
And basically what this does is it, uh, if you look here on uh, the master track FX, I have this plugin called Restream and it lets me, basically it sends the audio, you can see it says local broadcast. Um, it sends the audio output from Reaper out to OBS. And then I use the Restream plugin in OBS and it grabs the audio that Reaper is sending so that you can hear it. So that's why I use this template track. It has all of this stuff pre-configured for me so that I don't need to go and configure my broadcast every time. And then if you look at this one, this sound ID reference pr plugin, this, you can see it's after the restream in the, uh, the plugins. So these are my headphones, the Sennheiser HD 280 Pro wired, blah, blah, blah. Um, sound ID reference is if you are doing audio production and you want to like, and you have, and, and you already have like good equipment and you want to kind of like step up the level of your production work. Um, I highly recommend this this Sonarworks product, the Sound ID, because what it does, you can see that this there's this like EQ curve. So my headphones, these Sennheiser headphones, are advertised as flat response curve headphones because they're for professional audio work, um, and you want flat headphones. But it's very rare for headphones to be perfectly flat. Almost no headphones are perfectly flat. I would even venture that no headphones are perfectly flat even the most expensive ones. So what this what this software does, Sound ID, is it it uh, the the company Sonarworks has done an analysis on a bazillion different kinds of headphones and they also have a version of it that works for speaker monitors. So if you have monitor speakers that you want to make flat, you can use it for those as well. Um, but you select your headphones or your speakers and it will have a built-in frequency EQ to flatten out your speakers or your headphones. So I put this after the uh, after the the broadcast audio, so that it's not impacting you guys, since you're not using my headphones. But then when I hear the audio, it's perfectly flat because I have this on it. So I just wanted to show you that because I don't think I've talked about it before, but it's a really cool little tool that I use to, um, I don't know, I feel like it can help elevate my audio production. So that's that. So what we're going to do, we're going to insert a new virtual instrument on a new track. And today I want to use Tal Noisemaker. So it's this Togu audio line, and this is a free synthesizer. So we're gonna we're gonna mess around with this today. Um, I have never used this synthesizer. I was like poking around with it today before stream because I was trying to pick something that I wanted to use for our stream today. Yeah, that's a pretty cool. That's literally just the default sound. That's like you open it up, and that's that's just the sound that it makes. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I was I was messing around, and this one, it's free. I installed it a couple weeks ago. I was just poking around for new and interesting free software instruments. Gosh, I feel like I'm so laggy. I'm so sorry. I, I don't know what's going on. Um, but uh, I was just poking around, trying out different free software instruments, and I installed a couple. And this was one of the ones that I found. And I have a bunch of TAL or TAL, I don't, I don't really know. Um, I have a bunch of their plugins. And I have one or two other TAL instruments, uh, and this one is one of the coolest ones that I have from them. And like I said, it's it's free, it's super cool, and I really like it. So we're gonna mess with that. Let's let's just check out some of the sounds here, and even just the the presets. Let's check out some bass. What's crispy bass? I like that. Here, check. Hold on. We are gonna change our tempo. Let's see. How fast do we want to go today? 
I am thinking. Probably like there. We can always adjust it if we want to. Um, and set the tempo on here. Come on. I should really learn how to use my equipment better. Because I'm like tapping to try to match the tempo to what I just tapped in. And I don't know how to actually like change the tempo with a dial. I know that there's a way to do it. I'm just looking at my um, my audio controller here. Now it's not doing anything. Huh. I broke it. Yeah, who needs learning? Learning is for learning's for chumps. We're not learning here. We're just tapping. Come on, get to 125. You know, that's on 124, and that's, I'm going to just change this to 124 so that I can mess around with this. So, um, the, th the reason why I'm doing this, I normally don't bother matching the tempo on my, uh, on my MIDI controller, but this bass sound is cool, and there's a built-in arpeggiator on this uh, on this this controller. So like, and that's that's as cool as I was hoping it was going to be. Um, the other thing, I'm going to turn that off. Well, I guess it won't really work for the sound, so I'm going to leave it on. We'll do it. We'll do it later. Um, this thing here, this like window where I can like make little dots, is extremely cool. Um, it enables me to uh, like I can create my own custom stuff for sounds. So like I can use this to create arpeggiation or sweeps or like make the, the LFOs and the oscillators do interesting things. Uh, so we'll probably do some of that. I just need to figure out what kind of a groove we want to lay down today. That's really what we're what we're about to do. know if we'll start with this bass, but I really like this crispy bass, so we're probably going to come back to that crispy bass. Uh, but I want to start with something that's a little bit less rhythmic, just so I can hear what I'm doing with notes a little bit better. So we'll come back to you, crispy bass. We'll come back to you. Well, let's get a different bass. I like that, but I don't know if I'm feeling it for right now. And you can see, compared to the last time we were working on an original song and I was messing with a new synthesizer, this one, with the sounds all organized, is so much easier already. Alright, this is fucking sick. We are totally going to use this. Um, so. We're gonna mess with this this thing, so you can see we have the 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 grid, the notes, and the steps are all laid out here. So what we can do is we can add. Oops, I didn't want that. I wanted to. I want to make a new dot. So we can like mess with some of this, and actually, I want this to be up here, so it's on the one. And then 
We'll make some of these. And you can't hear it right now because you can see this over here is off. But in a minute, once we have a pattern drawn, we're going to do some cool stuff. So we can put it on. So you can hear it already. We have it on that oscillator, which is tuning it. And so it's making the note go up and down. So that's not how we're going to use this. I don't think we're going to put it on the oscillator, but on a filter, that sounds very cool. And we can mess with the filter parameters here. And so you can really hear it if we turn it off or if we turn it up, turn it all the way up. So this is a very cool feature that really can let you customize your sounds in this synthesizer. I really like it. Um, so if you're looking for a, a neat, customizable, and free synthesizer, this one rules. And I've only used this for like five minutes. Like I said, I only messed around with it before stream. And I was like, oh my gosh, this thing is awesome. So here we are. Uh, let's get our little, uh, what's it called? There we go. That's what I wanted. Make it a little bit smaller. Um, let's get our metronome on. That's very synth wavy, but maybe we can make it synth wavy because that sounds kind of cool. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Nah, that's not working for me at all. Why is it have two, two things? Oh, I see. We had it looping. down an octave, I think. Yeah! I think I know what we're going to do. We're going to make a progression that sounds cool. really need to remember to turn on quantize on input. I even did like a tutorial about it in my first stream and I always forget to use it, but it's just, it's way more convenient. Alrighty, let's back up and do this stupid thing to make it loop the way I want, which again is 
terrible and you should learn how to do it right. But I never did and I never will because fuck learning. We're making music, not learning. So we're going to stretch out this and I'm going to loop that. Is this back on looping? Yes, good. All right. So now. I don't quite like this. No! We want our heads empty and our ears full. That's the plan. No thoughts. Heads empty, ears full. We're just simple. Simple little opossum people hanging out in dens and trash, eating bugs and fruits. You know, peace. Okay, okay. You didn't use the opossum facts redeemed, Giselle, but you mentioned ticks. And so I need to read an opossum fact. I am actually not even sure which opossum fact it is. I'm gonna find it. It'll just give me a second here. Up, ba, 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 ba. Because, so there is a rumor that opossums eat a ton of ticks. And there's a good thing about it because it, uh, it has encouraged people to not consider them pests, because they're not pests. They do help to balance and take care of ecosystems. But this ticks thing, there's this rumor that opossums eat like bazillions of ticks. And uh, so here's, here's our opossum fact for the day. It says, <coughs> Despite the off-sighted factoid that opossums eat many ticks, this idea originated from a study about ticks involving tick larvae placed on captive possums, and the possums readily ate them because, you know, tick larvae. Tasty. Studies of wild opossum diets, including inspection of stomach contents and scats attempting to verify that opossums eat this many ticks, have found that ticks are not a substantial part of the typical wild opossum's diet. And so opossums will eat ticks, and if you are studying ticks and how they impact animals, and you literally put an opossum in a pen with thousands and thousands of tick larvae, the opossums will eat all of those tick larvae because you're literally just putting a bunch of tasty little grub things all over the place. So of course, of course they're going to eat it. But in the wild, they don't really eat ticks. Like they will if they find them. And they but they they don't eat a ton of ticks. It's just not a big thing. But opossums also don't really carry ticks because they have a relatively low body temperature compared to a lot of mammals. And so ticks don't tend to go for them as often as more hot-blooded mammals. Um, the more you know. Possums. I love them. I mean, I am a possum, so of course I love them. But I hope you can come to love them too. Okay, let's let's get back to this. I was I was editing this this little bit of audio that I played, and I got very distracted. Um,
Yes, to love possums is to love thyself. Truly, we are all possums on some level, I believe. I think I want one more note here. Oops. Don't need my start menu. Totally changing what we wrote. Maybe there's what I'm going for. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we want. I like this. So and we're gonna also just stretch this note out. We want that as a single note. All right. So I think we've got our at least a very initial baseline. I dig that. That is that is some um, like it's 1983 and you are going home from the skate park and suddenly you notice that there is a mysterious robot pursuing you and you're not sure that it's after you but it looks like it's after you and so you slowly start speeding up as you try to escape. Those are the kind of vibes it has. That's what I'm going to put out there. Yeah. So we're going to run with that. And this, we're going to stretch this window out. And we're going to call this base one. You're familiar with how I label things by now, I'm sure. All right. So now we're going to add another track with the same instrument on it to get another sound. First I'm going to turn off recording here and new virtual instrument. It's a VST3 so we can find it quicker and it's Town Noise Maker. There we go. And now maybe we can go back to that other base that we were messing around with. This is too small. I can't read it. I shrunk it down, and now we gotta blow it back up again. And if you're just joining us, um, I'm sorry if uh, I'm a little bit laggy. Normally I don't have any issues, uh, I'm not sure what's going on, but as soon as I switched over to Reaper today, um, I started lagging out kinda hard, and I don't know why. So I didn't wanna troubleshoot it on stream, I didn't wanna cancel or delay the stream, so we're just rolling with it. I'm a little bit choppy, and I apologize, but uh, that's, you know, it's not a VTuber stream without some scuff, so that's where we're at. But, uh, yeah. Here we go.
let's find that other bass sound that we messed with earlier. It was crispy bass. And we can turn on our arpeggiator. And now, with the one bass line already laid, I feel like we can do something more interesting with this. And the arpeggiator on my, uh, on my thing is not perfectly lining up because I'm not hitting the notes exactly on the beat and so it's not quantizing all perfectly this is part of why i usually don't worry about it and i don't use it but i just wanted to mess around with the sound so i think that's gonna work so we're gonna call this thumpy bass and let's give these one color for our bass as well i'll just go random oops i want the same color since they're both bass one random color there we go and what we're going to do, we've got that arpeggiator's back off again. So what I am going to do is I'm actually going to hold the notes. Um, and then I will apply an arpeggiator with another plugin because there's not an arpeggiator built into this synthesizer that I could find. Um, it might be there. Again, I've only used the synthesizer for like a few minutes and it's not jumping out at me. Um, and I want to make music, not sit around looking at a synth. So let's see if we can do it another way. We don't need the second one, and I actually even missed a couple of those nights. We probably could have just drawn those in without recording, but that's okay. Because we're going to basically have to do that anyway. Whoa, why is my... Definitely push those notes harder than that. Yeah, so we're basically writing it in. Anyway, we probably should have just done it this way from the start. And we might add a G here, actually. Put the D there. Well, it's, it's a G sharp because of the key we're in, but. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I mean, maybe you don't. I don't know. So now what we've got is that cool thumpy bass is only hitting that one time on the start of every measure. But what we can do first, I'm going to I'm going to save. Uh... Oh, look, you can see this is where I saved that, that other song. So we're going to go tracks, we're going to go 2023, and then we're going to make a new folder. This is going to be 2023 track four, and I'm naming things this way because I haven't decided on a name for this record yet. Um, so this is just going to be track four, noise maker there we go now we can save giselle just thought of something i'm gonna keep working but you you tell us what you thought of and i will keep keep an eye on chat this synth is kind of like the really dumpy bass <laughs> yeah i suppose it kind of is i suppose it kind of is yeah um, that's funny. 
I mean, it, it is a free synthesizer. I don't know when it came out, but I, I do know the track that you mean. I, I don't remember what it's what the track is called, but um, I definitely know the song you're talking about. And may, it might have even been the same synthesizer. I don't know when this synth came out. If anybody knows when uh, the, the Tal uh, Noisemaker came out, maybe it was out. It, gosh, it was like 10 years ago he was using that song, though. So who knows? Um, but what we're going to do for this, we're going to add uh, an arpeggiator. So I have, and this is cool. Oh, it's not a... Or, yeah. So we're going to add this blue arp. This is another free plugin. And you can see 2004. It's old. Um, and it is a free arpeggiator plugin. And so you can see right now, it's not doing anything. But if we put it up above the, come on, above the synthesizer, suddenly it's arpeggiating our MIDI because it's applying the arpeggiation before the uh, before the MIDI gets to the synthesizer. And so there, all of a sudden, we already have it. It's already set to 16th, which is what I was going to do. Um, so yeah, boom, arpeggiator. And we can, with this arpeggiator tool, this is, this is cool, if we wanted to like change the notes, we can actually go through and we can change the, we can add scale steps to change notes down here in this menu. Um, we can change the octave here. We can move stuff around. We can turn some notes off and change our patterns and write custom patterns and stuff all in this tool. Um, so there's actually a lot of customizability. Right now, we're just going to leave it basic because we just want some 16th notes on this thumpy bass to give it that synth wave 16th note drive. And you can probably hear that those two basses, they're already, they're so similar in their, uh, their note range and the, the, the frequency profiles, they're already kind of interfering with each other. Um, we will fix that in a little bit. I'm not going to sweat it right now because I just want to work on some composition. Um, that is something we will have to fix, though, because that sounds super muddy. And we would not want to put out a track with the bass sounding all that, that muddly and, and like smooshed together and kind of like distorting each other. Um, so we will carve out a, a frequency range and a space in the mix for each of these bases so that they coexist. And that's something you may have seen me do before. I, I have done that before on stream, I think. Um, so now let's add a, let's add a drum kit because I want to get immediately, I want to, on this, I want to get some, um, some side chaining on the kick. So at the very least, we're going to add some kick. So we want a track from template and let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Do we want the epic 80s kit? I think we want this one. Because Synthwave doesn't often use, like sometimes it does, but it doesn't often use like very synthesized sounding drums. It often uses drums that sound like real drums, but they are also synthesized drums. This is, so this is not a synthesizer per se. This is a sampled drum kit of this Roland synthesizer. So it gets a little convoluted, but we have drums. So now we can record some drums. Uh, one thing that we can do, I think it's control M. Oh, nope. Control shift M. There it is. So this is our track manager. The TCP is the track control panel that's up here. And the MCP is the master control panel that's down here. So what we're going to do, we don't need to see all of the individual audio channels up in our tracks. So we can just, oh, did I just turn off the MIDI? 
No, I did. We can just turn all of these off because what these tracks are, this is what the MIDI is routing the audio that it's creating to. So when we hit like our MIDI controller to play a note, it sends a, a MIDI signal and says, hey, play a note here. And it sends it to the channel for that instrument. And then the, uh, the track that I just hid from up here is where it plays that audio. So the MIDI is on this track here and then the audio is on the is split out you can see all those different tracks lighting up as i spam some buttons um and so since it sends the audio to different tracks then you're able to get a you're able to, to edit and process your different pieces of your drum kit separately um and so that's uh that's the idea so let's So we're just going to record some quarter note kick notes. Uh, actually, why would I record this? I can literally just, we're going to, uh, we'll do it for the full eight bars. Just so that it we can edit it and stuff later on if we want to tweak things. Uh, we're going to just create a new MIDI item. And where's our, where's our kick drum? What note is that on? This C. That's our kick drum. Okay. So we are just gonna create a note. And it needs to be on track 10. So there we go. So now we got a kick drum. And we want it to just be on every quarter note, I think is what we're going to do. Because again, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty typical for this genre. You just want your, your kick drum to just kind of spam notes constantly. Um, so, whoa, 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 I didn't want to do that. Uh, so we're just going to grab this, copy it, and we're just going to paste these notes for all eight measures. All right, kick drum's done. Look at that. All right, so the reason I wanted to lay down the kick drum now is because on this thumpy bass, we are going to add some sidechain compression. And I do this basically on every track. So if you've watched me at all, you know exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, I've got a preset for it and everything. Sidechain for kick channel. And we might tweak that in a minute, but we have to do the routing. So what we're going to do, we're going to send the audio from the kick. We don't want to route any MIDI. We just want to route the audio. And it's going to be from... Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, whoops, we um, leave that alone. So this send, we're gonna send it to Thumpy Bass. We're gonna send it to new channels on the receiving track, three and four. We're not gonna send the MIDI and there. So now, if you look at our Thumpy Bass track, we've got these two extra things. And you can hear that compressor is already impacting that sound. So instead of just constant notes, it's got that start of that pulsation that we want for the whole song to just give it that like, whoom, whoom. Hey, hey, Coyote Gundam, how you doing? How you doing? It's good to see you. 
Welcome! We are working on a fresh synthwave track today. We are using a synthesizer that I have not used before, made by TAL Noise, and it's called Noisemaker. It goes well. We are just really getting into it. Um, per usual, I uh, we chatted for a little bit, and then I took a bunch of time to um, explain what I'm doing, uh, like I typically do. So we uh, we only have a little bit of audio actually laid down so far, but uh, it's good. We're chill. We're hanging out, and I don't know if you use um, Seven TV for Twitch emotes, but I made a 7TV and I have a dumpy now. Dumpy in the chat. So if you have, if you use 7TV emotes, you can use, you can use a sky dumpy here. Um, but you got to get 7TV to use it since I'm not a Twitch affiliate yet. We need those nine more follows. If you got nine friends or one friends, and you want to help out, send them the channel and be like, yo, drop Sky follow. She's trying to get affiliate because uh, I would really like to be able to use some of the affiliate tools. I want custom emotes and I really want channel points. I have some fun stuff I want to do. But for now, we're making do. We got 7TV and I'm going to add some emotes there. All right, so we want to go back to our thumpy bass, and we are going to just mess with this compressor to really give it a lot of that pulsy, thumpy, synthwave sound. I really want that to really be hitting on this track. That'll do it. I think what we want to do is actually change this. Whoa, I don't want everything. I just want the one note. Reaper, chill out. Chill the F out. Ugh. I think that needs to start there. Nah. I think we'll just add the same the same pickup note, actually. Uh Oh, I'm in the wrong... No, I was in there. That's... that's why. I was playing the wrong part. I think that that works. No, I am going to add the same pickup note. What note is this? I think I know, but it's always good to be sure. Yeah. So that's a D sharp. And, and D sharp here. That's much better. And then one other thing that we can do to really set off this thumpy sound, we're going to add some automated, like a, a sweepy LFO to it. So we're going to add another effect. I know we're spending all kinds of time on the bass, 
But the bass is really the heart of this kind of music, especially this thumpy, like, boom, 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 kind of rhythmic part of the bass. That's like, when you hear a synthwave song, and it really just makes you just kind of like in the zone, or like you want to drive really fast, or like super focusing on a video game, or whatever it is that you listen to, that you do when you listen to synthwave music, that like it gets you in the zone. It's that driving thump on every single beat of the music. That's what's really like making it. That's what creates that that vibe. That's what makes it so good for that kind of like focused activity. sip some water here, is um, is that everything is kind of thumping and pulsing on that, uh, on the, on every single beat. And so it's just this rhythmic kind of like whoom, whoom, whoom kind of experience. So we are going to add maybe an equalizer. How do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Let's see. I don't remember what clean sweep is, but I think it's what we want. I think this will do. Let's do this so I can see. I'm gonna solo this. I'm just trying to figure out how we want to mess with this joystick over our time. So what we'll do is we'll automate this because this joystick is cool because it controls both these knobs and those knobs control this filter that we are putting on the uh, on the audio. And so what we want is to just kind of figure out I think we can we can mess with this. So let's parameters. Mm, I see, I see. So we're we're gonna have to automate each one separately. That's okay. So let's go with we can do high pass first. We want an LFO, and you can see all of a sudden, when we turn on the LFO, it starts going crazy. So what we want, we want to turn the strength down a little because we don't want it to go all the way. We want the speed. We want to sync to the tempo, and we want it to be slow. So we want maybe like two measures, so eight quarter notes. And let's give this a listen. And then what we can do is we'll touch the low pass and now we can add another one. So now we see last touched is low pass. So now we can go parameter modulation, turn on another LFO. And for this one, turn down the strength here.
So we want our baseline value. That's the issue. And we can even set these so they're running on different tempos. So if we set this one for like three quarter notes, they won't perfectly line up. And that will give us a whole bunch of weird variation as those two, uh, the two waveforms that we're applying to our modulations kind of interfere with each other. It's not actual interference, but if you think of the way that these LFOs work, it's, it's moving the bars back, like up and down on a sine wave. And so if one is operating at three quarter notes and one is operating on eight quarter notes, then they're gonna see, you can see the high one on the low pass filter is moving real fast and the high pass filter down here is moving slow. And so we get like all kinds of weird, uh, the, the, the actual shape of our sweep EQ changes a whole bunch. And then we can turn down how much it actually applies to the signal. So we'll say, let's make this like 60%. So we get a decent amount of dry signal in there. And then we can probably, with that, we can probably turn up the strength of our, high, of our, uh, our low pass filter a little bit. And there we go. So now we went from having this kind of annoying sounding, like really like sound to this sound that has a whole lot of nuance and is kind of ever shifting and changing. And it really just gives us this whole new layer of texture. So what we're going to do now, we're going to add that same uh, compressor to this base. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a new receive. I'm just going to save because I'm really laggy. I'm worried Reaper might crash or something today. I'm not sure what's going on with my computer. Um, so we're going to add a new receive to this base. And like we did before, we're going to get a receive from the kick. We don't want the MIDI. We want the audio, but we want it on new channels. So it's sending to three and four, and those, the reason we do this is those, those channels three and four on this track are not going to our audio out. Instead, they're going to our compressor. And so now if we solo this, you can see we've got that same thumpy effect. This is the input from the kick drum, and that's this, this side here as our side chain. And so whenever an input hits from the kick drum, it applies the compressor and you can see that's the compressor activating. So for this one, we want it to be more mellow. We want that thump, but we don't want it to kill the whole bass drum. We want to hear the bass. And by we want to hear the bass, what I mean is we want to hear all of the notes. We want to hear it holding. We don't want it to totally duck it out of the mix. We want to just apply some of that, give it, give some space for the kick in the mix with the compressor every time it hits. And also make this 
have the same kind of like thumpy kind of vibes that are so characteristic of the genre we're working in. And you can hear, even without carving out frequencies for the two bases, remember when we first laid them down, they were super duper muddy and like interfering with each other. They're already doing that a lot less and we've added a kick drum, which is more bass frequency. But because we've added these compressors and some filter, some filters to it, they're already starting to get out of each other's way a little bit. It still isn't great. This is not done. It's not mixed or anything. Obviously, it's just basses. But the um, you can you can really hear they're already bothering each other a lot less. It sounds less crowded and less muddy. What do we want to do next? Do we want to keep working on drums, which we could do, or we could add some more instruments and then worry about drums later. I know last time I like built out a, a scratch drum track and then we redid all the drums at the end. And this one, I feel like maybe we'll just like do the drums in spurts as we go and not worry about a scratch track because we can always use a click. We don't we don't need that, right? We can we could just use a click track. Click track works. I don't need to make the drums twice, do I? I think we're just gonna do it once. So yeah, so let's 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 keep going with instruments. We'll make more drums later. I am going to put the drums at the top. And we're just going to rename this Drum MIDI. And we'll do kick because maybe we'll do a bunch of tracks like we did last time. Last time, and you don't have to do this, but I often find it helpful just for my brain. I will put the MIDI for each drum on a different track, which is ridiculous and results in a ton of extra unnecessary tracks. But like I said, it helps my brain to keep track of things. So I don't know if we're going to do that or not, but for now we will uh, we'll label it kick because that's all that's on there. So let's add a new instrument. And if you'll notice, we keep using this same instrument on all of our everything. We're just using Cal Noise Maker, and I think that everybody here has watched me and I've talked about this a bunch, but I am uh, I'm trying to make an album right now where for the the primary synthesizer on each track will be a single synthesizer and each track will be using a different software synthesizer and it'll just be named after the synthesizer that I used. So I have several tracks done for this already. I've done uh, a couple of Brainworks synthesizers. So I did one with the Oberhausen. I did one with um, Nyphonium. And then the first one we did on stream was kind of a slog, and I apologize that it was a slog, but uh, it was with the FM8 by Native Instruments, and I, I hated that synthesizer. <laughs> I have it, and I don't think I'm ever going to use it again. Um, there was a, there was one sound, one sound in that synthesizer that we found that I really liked because it's kind of like a, a little like built-in house beat where you like hold down a button and it makes a, a, a like a house music and it sounds kind of cool. So we are like, I might use that someday again, but I honestly, I can't imagine using that for a whole other project. It was, it's so unorganized. I just, I hate it. I hate it. You can see I keep defaulting to angry eyebrows. I'm not sure why. It happened suddenly. But that's fine. Uh, probably because I'm talking about the synthesizer. Um, 
So today we are using the TAL Noisemaker. Um, that's that's the synthesizer that we're using for this track. So that's why I keep on using the same synthesizer is because this track is going to be on this album and it's going to be called Noisemaker and it's going to primarily or exclusively use this synthesizer for all of the synthesized audio on the track. So with that out of the way, let's just jam and try to find a, a like, let me get in my head what we want to add and then we'll pick a sound for that. Let's just kind of like, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. ideas. Watch out, the possum's got ideas! Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah. And let's add some of this. Just again, it's just going to give us texture. We can use these things to really use less dots and still dial things in how we want. And the cool thing is you don't even need, like these don't need to be on the beats. You can put them on the beats and we're going to primarily use beats as a guide, but it doesn't have to be. Like that. There. Okay. So we have this, this thing. Let's turn it up. And can't really hear that yet. But let's, what happens if we put it on an oscillator? Yeah. See, see, we get crazy effects, crazy effects. So we can really have fun with this stuff. So clearly this oscillator is not working because the oscillator is, is changing our, our tune, our tuning on the note and we don't want it to like get way out of tune. It's just fun. You're getting very sleepy. Very, very sleepy. Relax. It's all going to be okay. Remember, you are a consumer. You will buy products and you will give bits to your favorite streamers. We're just engaging in a little bit of jarring hypnosis. It's fine. It's fine. All good. Uh, ba, 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 ba. And you can you can hear when we we put it on the the um the, the this ring rod setting, and it's just subtly changing the texture. Oh my god, Tob is still going? 
didn't she start streaming at like 2 a.m. in the East Coast or something? Oh my god. That that skunk is out of her mind. I wow. Wow. What a skunk. For real. What a what a monster. She's just like oh! I don't even know what to make of that. I don't know how people stream for so long. Like, we've been going for 90 minutes, and I'm still feeling great. But, like, streaming for 12 hours, since I started streaming, like, I've always kind of thought, oh, yeah, that's no big deal to stream for 8 or 10 or 12 hours. Because I will often sit down on my computer and play games and mess around or work on stuff for that long. But it's different. Like, sitting down to stream and being on and focused on so many different little moving parts like and talking and trying to to not zone out or take a, a a break and like look at twitter or your social media or whatever and actually stay engaged for that long that's it's tiring it's really tiring like i've streamed for like four hours and after that i was beat i was totally beat i don't know that those kind of like eight to ten hours are just like that's crazy. Yeah, like I could I could totally play games for that long. Um, I've sat down and I played Dead by Daylight for like twelve hours straight. Absolutely. Same thing with Final Fantasy. Like straight up, just play for hours and hours and hours. But that's just playing, and I'll take like go and eat and stretch a little bit maybe, and you could take breaks when you're streaming. But I don't know, it's it's different. Having to talk and pay attention to OBS and your chat and all that stuff, not that chat's bad. I love chat. But it's just, it could be tiring, you know? Going for 10, 12, 14 hours. That's pretty intense. It makes me think of Iron Mouse's subathon, honestly. Her subathon, where she streamed for like a month straight. And obviously she slept on stream and all the, all of that stuff, but that was just, that's so extreme. I had a great time when she was doing that. It was so fun, but, um, it was, it was so hardcore. And I knew it was hardcore, but until I started streaming myself, I didn't realize quite how hardcore that actually was. That was a really, really extreme thing. Yeah, I, I think she streams from bed. I think you're right, Giselle. But, um, still. Still. Hardcore. We love Mouse. Mouse is perhaps the queen of all VTubers. That Iron Mouse. And let's save. Okay, I gotta get back into what we're doing. What were we working on? Meh. Struggling a little bit with a lead here, which seems to happen to me a lot.
We're just an, a wanking around stream. Noodle stream. love Art Blakely. Dude is one of my favorite musicians of all time. Art Blakely is so good. If you don't know who Art Blakely is, he is a legendary jazz musician. Um, and yeah, love that dude's stuff. Love it. Hmm. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. I feel like 
We can, oh man, Art Blakely's Synthwave cover. That would be fun. like that could be cool here so like what we're doing is we're starting out with that and then on like the second time through we raise it up a note in the uh in the pentatonic scale that we're playing in to kind of give it this major feel So it's the same pattern, it's just shifted up by one step in the scale. So it's still in key, but it sounds like it's in the major scale. So yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. And it might work. I think it might work. So we're, we're going to try it. I'm going to record some, some of this stuff uh, and see, see what we can get, see what we can get. First, look, I'm remembering before we record, we're going to go to chord settings quantize to eight notes hey <laughs> remember don't like that at all. Blech. No, 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 no. It's close. But it's just not what I'm looking for. Not what I'm looking for out of myself. Mm, 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 mm. I got an idea. That was that was almost it. That was close. Something like that. Something like that. We might have something we can work with. We might have something we can work with here. So you're gonna go, whoa, just the one. You're gonna go over here, because you're our second time through. And we're gonna mess with this. Ah! 
I don't like the end of this, but... The rest of it I do like. They're just too busy. There's too many notes. I get a little jazz happy. I go crazy. Just spamming all the notes like I'm playing bebop. But it's not bebop. It's synthwave. We want to keep it simple, danceable, but still interesting. We're just going to delete all this. What? Hmm. Man, you just... the same item? What? What? That was the whole point. There we go, there we go. Okay. Now we can delete this stray little guy. And come back into here. And let's just get you whoa Ooh, get you all on the beat. So this at the end there, that. I wanted another note there, but I couldn't get low enough on my keyboard. But I'm not sure where I want it now. Now that I've listened to it a bunch of times and second guessing my immediate, my immediate thoughts.
I dig this vibe. Definitely dig this vibe. I like, I think I like these last notes in our phrases. A little staccato. This is sounding good. Look, we're turning it into a song instead of a bass line. I always start with the bass instead of a melody part because I am, uh, my, a lot of my gigging instrumentation career, I was a bassist for a very long time. I mean, I still am a bassist, but I learned bassist. I, I learned bassist. Yes. Yes. I learned bassist. I'm a bassist expert. I learned bassist. I learned, I learned bass in, um, when I was like a little kid, um, it was, I thought that, uh, the bass was super cool. It was the second instrument that I learned, uh, and out of, out of many instruments, I started with a horn and then, uh, picked up the bass and well, I might've actually picked up the drums before the bass. I don't remember. It was around the same time, around the same time I picked up drums and bass just because I was playing in, uh, in the school band. And they had drum kits around and drums around you could play if you came in to practice for extra hours. And uh, so I was messing around with the drums and I really wanted to play the bass. And I got a, a, a bass as a gift when I was in, I think, like the sixth grade, I got a bass. Uh, it's a really cheap one and it was like a, a kid size it was like three-quarter size so i could actually play it because i was a very small child um and yeah i was able to learn the bass i mostly taught myself and then i learned the guitar later but the bass is truly my love water gotta drink it Let's stretch out these tracks so that we can mess around with the second lead part with the backing instrumentation. I got a little bit noodly at the end of that too. Like I like to do. I don't like to put it in songs, but whenever I'm like messing around and recording, I get super noodly. I've played way too much jazz in my life, and now I just noodle. Noodle all the time, all day, every day. It's just noodling. If you don't know what noodling is, it's when you're just kind of like fucking around playing ridiculous wonky stuff. Uh, often it's way too busy. It's, it's good for like soloing or like improvisational soloing in jazz or in, in like a jazz track where you really want like a lot going on and like you want the bass to be walking all over the place and the horns to be all like, <laughs> that's when, uh, that's when noodling is good. But in this kind of music, noodling is the enemy. Hey, Mira time. What's going on? What's going on? I'm glad you could make it. Welcome. Welcome to the chat. It's good to see you. Um, I don't know if you use 7TV, but I made a 7TV. And so we have one single 7TV emote. And it is dumpy. Got a dumpy Skylarka. And if you can't see it in the chat, 
You can see it in the stream. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. I'm very proud of it. I made it myself. It's the first emote that I've ever made for Twitch. I have made Discord emotes before, but I have never drawn or animated anything like this from scratch for an emote. All of the emotes that I've made have been like, oh, I'm going to make a JoJo's emote. So I'll take like a clip of JoJo's and I'll trim it down and I'll shrink it down and I'll turn it into emote size. And then maybe add like some text on it or something. But uh, I have... Ah, yeah, yeah. You need the extension, I think, to see them. Um, but, you know, you can always get it later. Uh, someday, someday, whenever I get those last nine followers that I've been needing for a few weeks, um, we will get the emotes in actual Twitch instead of in 7TV. But for now, since I need nine more followers, we are on, uh, we're on 7TV with the emotes. But it's handy. It's handy. Because like, like I said, like I said last time, a big part of why I want to get to affiliate is so that I can use features like custom emotes. So it's very cool that there's stuff like 7TV out there that let me at least kind of use these things. Obviously, you kind of need to be like a Twitch power user to even know what 7TV is. But uh, at least for those people and for me, I can get stuff rolling. And then whenever I do get to affiliate and get custom emotes on Twitch, I can just move them all and put them in Twitch. Like, if I start working on emotes now, I feel like that's great, right? So we can uh, have some have some good stuff here. But if you are not following and you're having a good time or you just want to help me out and get help get me to affiliate because that's what I'm going for right now, drop a follow. rid of you shrink you guys for the ends of these phrases whoa getting back into music here um just doing what we did on the last uh the last melody where the last notes i really liked them more staccato where they ended short instead of held at the end of each phrase so we're shortening those down i don't know why there is a rogue note here And then here's here's my mad mad noodling. runs like if you listen to this this run of notes like this is like a very like almost like a punk rocky type guitar like the kind of thing you do on like a guitar and like a punk rock song like but that's not at all suited to what we're working on in this genre so we are definitely not using this i think we're gonna just gonna go like this Get rid of all of that. Like that. Greatly simplify it. That could work, that could work. Ah, 
Ah, you have better TTV, not 7TV. I see, I see, I see, I see. Uh, I think it is 7TV.app. And they have a, uh, they do have a, an Edge add-on that you can install. I should put it on better TTV as well. I mean, I can, I can throw the emote on both. Uh, maybe I'll do that after stream. I'll, uh, I'll make a, a better TTV and throw them on there as well. struggling with how to end this one. The other one was simpler because it was it was like halfway through the phrase. It didn't need to give us that nice resolution and everything. But now I'm like, hmm, 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 hmm. What are we going to do with this? What are we going to do with this? Let's listen to it again. Maybe I'll get hit with some inspiration. Something real simple like that. Something like that would work well here. Just like real, real simple. I think that's all it needs. I didn't play anything. I didn't play anything. Uh... No, 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 no. That's the wrong no. That's the wrong no. like that. I think that'll work. And again, I forgot again to change my settings on the track. Whoa! So we just gotta grab the MIDI and put it into our other MIDI item. We could just glue it, but this is just as fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That works, that works, that works. Uh, let's, I want to clean some of these notes up a little bit. Some of them are a little too legato, I think, for what we're going for for this. Like this guy. Yeah, you guys are. It's not just legato. Things just aren't quite right on the beats where I want them. Which is weird, because I quantize this. Here we are, doing manual quantization again, on stream love! That should work. All right, so we've got some bass line and some lead line.
I think what I want to do now is actually simplify the end of that first one even more because we did it a little bit, but listening back to it, it's still too busy. Might, that might do it. I want to move this note up. Maybe I don't want to move that note up. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. We are getting somewhere. We have been going for two hours now. So I think I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to refill my water and my mate, and I'm going to use the little opossum's litter box. I don't use a litter box in real life. I swear. Uh, mate, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yerba mate, it's a, um, it's a type of tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know all about mate. You hang with Maru de Cinco. You know, you know. So, um, yeah, I got into mate. I, I drank it a very long time ago. And then, um, hanging out with Maru so much, I have, uh, gotten super into mate again. And so now I drink it instead of coffee and it's real nice, real nice. So I'm going to get some more water. I'm going to get some more mate. I am going to hit the restroom and I will be back in like three to five minutes um so don't go away we will be right back after these messages deliberate murder
Vengeance means blood. I got some water and I got a peanut butter sandwich again, which I got on a recent stream. Oh, um, 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 um. Peanut butter is so good. And even though it's on like super soft white bread, which isn't my favorite, I can eat it because it's super soft. And so despite my, my sore mouth, from surgery, I can eat the peanut butter, and I love it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Snack, water, and peanut butter. Yum. Okay, let's let's dig back into this. What else can we add? First off, gotta fix the looping so we can jam out. Second off, we're gonna call this lead one and we'll give it a color. Really liking green today on the random color generator on huh, Reaper. Now we're gonna add a new instrument and it's gonna be the same one because of that's what we're doing. Noisemaker. And let's mess with some arpeggiators. The arpeggiators in the synthesizer are very neat because there's not a built-in arpeggiator per se, which I talked about earlier, but uh, there are arpeggiators here, right? And so let's try this. And so it still can get arpeggiators the way that it's applying the oscillators and the LFOs, which is very neat. I think it's cool. And then again, this, this panel, you can see it's applying this big filter 
on a pattern to give it rhythm like an arpeggiator would do. It's I, it's just super neat. It's super neat. It's not like any, it's not quite like any synthesizer I've ever used. I dig that. I dig that. I feel like if I were ever to do a soundtrack for a video game, this would be a great sound to use. Seven is so good. Oh my God, Giselle, Giselle, how did I not pick up on that when we watched that show? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Giant robots in Eric 7 are called LFOs, and LFOs are frequency oscillators that you use in synthesizing audio and uh, and everything in Eureka 7 is all about music and music culture and it oh my god yeah 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 that's yep yep that's i should have known that immediately when we watched it because i've known about lfos for a bazillion million years um and i own that I own that series on Blu-ray, and I never picked up on that. I just was like, oh, yeah, big robots. You know, it's part of my, my no-thoughts-head-empty philosophy, I think. I was watching the anime show about cool robots and, like, exciting emotional things happening and, and like, oneness and, and zen and, like, non-duality and all that stuff going on in Eureka 7, and I'm not thinking about synthesizers and music. I'm just thinking about how cool it is. If I'm thinking about anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what a moment. Oh my god, my mind is totally blown. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just trying to find a neat sound to start from as a bass for another instrument to add to our track right now. Um, I might have better luck in pads. Anything that has like 86 or 84 or whatever in it, I always check it out. Oh, and it's always so good. peanut butter time um mm. Mm -mm. Mm. love that peanut butter um so i think we're gonna use this and i think i'm not even gonna mess with it at least yet and what i want to try is literally i'm just gonna copy this here and i'm gonna mute this 
and I'm gonna play it. Yeah, now you know. Possums love mate and peanut butter. Mm. So we're going to call this lead two. Because this is a really good lead sound. To, a, to an extent, I actually like this better than the initial lead sound that I actually had messed around with. This is, it's, oh, it's just so good. But, I wasn't looking for a lead. We've had a sick one, but I wasn't really looking for that. So, here we go again. Grab our instrument we're working with. Ba, 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 ba. And, let's go back into the pads. Because we only tried one pad and we already were like, oh yeah, let's go, let's go. You know, it's time for me to take my ibuprofen. Uh, I'm actually a little bit late, but thankfully I'm not in a ton of pain. So, I'm going to take that. Uh -huh. mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you don't know, I had a, I had a, an oral surgery revision on Wednesday. Uh, it was kind of a surprise. I had had my oral surgery a month and a half ish ago and i was having pain and i went in for a checkup about it and they were like oh we have to do some revision work and so we just we i had them do it that day um so i am technically recovering from minor oral surgery but i can talk it's fine i'm, I'm not in a ton of pain today or anything so we're good we're good we're hanging out we're making music if you are 
new here and you want to drop follow, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it because, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get to 50. Um, yep, yep, yep. I'm totally fine. It's like, it's sore. I'm on, I'm on, uh, some like anti-inflammatories and stuff to help manage the pain, but it's, uh, it's fine. I'm okay. Um, and it, it should be the last, hopefully this correction will be that will, it'll be it and I'll be good to go. Um, let's get back into this and I want to work on this stuff I just recorded here. Come on, go to the, no. Go to the start, dang it. Go to the start. I'm trying to find a, a, a nice chord that will help to make that transition to the second lead line. Even though our uh, our bass line's the same through all of that, if we make the chords follow the uh, the lead, it'll be interesting. More catchy. can actually do is I'm going to split this because this note is really the start of this progression. Whoa! No, don't loop! Don't loop! You're going to be a new item for this part. There we go. And let's just loop this section. And we'll get a progression going for this part of the song as well. So that is... I think it's an octave up from there, which I can't currently play. No, it's not. It's just there. Oh yeah, it is. But 
that's where we're at. Instead of playing this, I'm just gonna... Disable my Windows key or something. I bet I could use like a uh, auto hotkey to do that or something when I go live. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Now it's the last for the peanut butter sandwich. Rest in peace, peanut butter sandwich. You were delicious. You were delicious, thank you! Mm. Mm. Big sip of mate, and we'll keep back at it. Now we want that chord. Okay. There's so many different ways we can go with this. Might do that.
That needs to be on the three, but that could work. That could work. Oh, our, our loop is... What is... What is happening? Oh, I see what's happening. <laughs> oh, it wasn't long enough. I was like, what's happening? Why isn't it working? And that's the other reason it's not working. Yes! Okay, yeah, so it does work. I'm not crazy. Just gonna shorten that. And then let's mess with this sound a little bit. This is gonna be chord 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 one. And stick it there. And I'm just gonna loop through our whole thing and we're just gonna mess with this sound a little bit. Yeah. All right. We got the beginning of something here. We got the beginning of something here. I would really like to get some arpeggiation to work on this, but I'm not sure how I want it to sound. Let's get another instance of our synth here. Yeah, 
and we could like make a noise from scratch, but I really like just picking a preset first. It seems like it might take longer because we got to like browse through and pick stuff. But ultimately, I think that it is faster, at least for me. If you're super familiar with the synthesizer you're using and everything, then, uh, oof, oof, ah, ooh, sorry. Ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah. Um, but if you're super familiar with the synthesizer that you're using, then it's probably, probably easier to just start from scratch and make something, but like, I'm not super duper familiar with any of the synthesizers that I use or have. I have a ton of them and I'm always messing around with them. So I always start with a preset and then I understand what the different parameters can do to the presets. And so I, that's why I, you always see me like messing around looking at presets is cause it's just easier for me. It might not be easier for you, but everybody's different. I'm just messing around now. Uh, let's do something else. Nah. I thought maybe if we made it higher, we could mess with it to get what I'm looking for, but no. Not gonna work. I'm trying to get like a kind of a plucky sound. Bells could work too, though. That's like a very early 2000s indie rock. That's what that reminds me of. <laughs> Too aggressive. If I were to ever make like a stock music thing for like a weird commercial or something, that's a sound for that. Definitely a sound for that. Uh... Nope.
weird that it has this pulse that like doesn't do anything. Let's let's give it some stuff to do. No, 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 I know I'm just like pushing keys here. It's probably not terribly exciting, but I'm trying to mess with the sound. There we go, there we go, there we go, okay. believe you're here you're like traveling through space-time right now hello I can't believe that you you made some time in your 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 like time travel and everything to, to stop by and say hello to little old me mm -hmm. I was talking about you earlier because I'm drinking mate and uh, and so I was talking about you Mapo del bimbo 
Oh man, a pizza and a cookie. I want pizza and cookies. I had, I, I was talking about it a little bit ago. I had mouth surgery the other day and I can't really eat hard, crusty, crunchy things. Oh man, yeah, Italian pizza. Oh, so good. You know, I just discovered I didn't give this a color. We got some boring gray. More green. It loves the green today. Sometimes it loves pink. Sometimes it loves purple. Today it loves green. Hard, <laughs> hard crunchy, crusty things is my favorite music genre. Well, we're not really doing hard, crunchy, crusty things today here, but I hope you can enjoy what we're working on. I have this weird, like, I don't even know what to call that, but I have that weird, this weird pulsy thing that I want to, I want to add to this track. I, I keep, I keep being like, I'm going to add an arpeggio or an arpeggiator of flux. And then I end up like, I did, I said that and then I added chords and then I said it again and now I'm, that is not arpeggiators. That is a weird squeaky sound, but I'm just going to roll with it. That's. That's what you gotta do when you're making music. You gotta just go with the flow. You know what I mean? You can't, like, you can't be like, well, this isn't what I set out to do, so I'm not gonna do it at all. Because if you do that, you're not gonna end up making anything. It's like any kind of art, you know? If you sit down to, to draw, I don't know. A... Okay, here's, here's an example. Here's an example with art. I sat down last night to make the dumpy emo, which Maru, if I don't know if you have, uh, if if you've got uh, seven TV emotes, but if you have seven TV emotes, I've got a dumpy, I've got a dumpy. Um, but I sat down to make that last night, right? And I started off, and I ended up in very different places. I started off. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to make it like move slow and stretch out and whatever. And I ended up with like a real quick, real goofy dumpy. And uh, you can see it at least in the, the video. Well, you could for a second. Um, and that's that's how art goes, right? You start one doing one thing and you end up liking something better that you discover during your process. And so... Uh, you gotta like, you just gotta roll with that. If you get too hung up on what you think you should be doing instead of what you are doing, you're never gonna make any art. And if you do make art in that kind of mindset, you're never gonna be happy with what you produce because you're gonna have found a whole bunch of things you really liked and then tabled them, you know? If you find something you like, even if it's not what you're looking for, you gotta lean into it. You gotta lean into it. There's this one, uh, there's this one quote on a, uh, it's used in a Jeff Rosenstock record and as a sample. And it's from this really old, weird, cheesy 90s movie about a kid from California who's a surfer who, uh, who has to go to like Ohio or something for the winter. And it's like full of snow and he like is landlocked and he gets all bullied and whatever. And it's this, this this cheesy 90s movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, but the quote, the quote is so good. The quote is so good. And it's, it applies. It applies to what I'm talking about with going with the flow with art, right? So it's, uh, it's, the point is when you got a perfect wave, a perfect anything, you go for it. Don't worry about what the shark has stuffed up his butt. I mean, There'll always be sharks, but how often does that once in a lifetime wave come along? And that's that's what I'm talking about. Right? Like working on a song and you're and I'm like messing around and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna find an arpeggiator or I'm gonna find this or I'm gonna find that. And then while I'm looking for a sound or I'm messing around with some settings to try to, to figure out that, I find something else that I really like. Like, I'm going to lean into what I really like. That's how you get good art. That's how you get art you're happy with. Is, uh, 
you, you lean into the the things that you discover and the things that you do. It's it's all about breaking eggs and making messes and then turning those messes into things you really enjoy. Yeah, exactly, exactly, Maru. That's like the same the same thing. It's it's I think it's really anything creative. If you're doing anything creative, it's a a really great thing to keep in mind is that like. I don't know. It, sometimes things don't go as planned, and that's okay. And it can even be better that way. Let's let's get back into this song here. Oh, I know I want the window. I don't want it. Give me the window. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's, man, my computer is so laggy. Whenever I'm in Reaper, it's super laggy all of it, like today. I'm not sure what that's about. Because we haven't had this issue in previous streams. Um, yeah, like like you say, Maru, like, it's, you gotta be ad adaptable. That's, that's really, I think, the word that sums it all up. Is if you can be adaptable when you're creating you're going to have a much better time than if you try to just be super strict with yourself and, and inflexible. I don't like these on the ones. Let's try it on the twos. That's much better. As late as here. Yeah. I dig that. Dig that. We might we might need to rewrite this, but let's just try using the same the same thing for this. Mm, yeah, 
yeah, we definitely got to rework it. So we'll split it. So laggy. I think that works. Works to me. I guess I'm the one that counts here, right? So, yeah. That's what we're gonna go with.
So I think this is a good starting place uh, in terms of like a starting progression. We won't have, obviously, everything won't be coming in all at once when we get to building out the song, but I, I'm i really liking this. I feel like this is a, a good groove. Um, so let's see if we can add like another section here that we can use as like a bridge. Because if you look, this is like 30 seconds long. So that's that's pretty good already in terms of like, we've got this 16 bar progression that can be kind of like our verse uh, that we that we come back to. And then we want to add another chunk of songs. I'm just going to stretch the kick drum out because we want that to be there. No matter what we're doing, we're going to have the kick drum, at least for a recording. And then I think what I want to do is actually start with this thumpy, thumpy bass. So where, what notes are we operating on here? Is this a watch from A, A sharp to D sharp? I use that all the time, that, that kind of thing. Something, something like that, something like that. Yeah, 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 let's go. So we're going to change that last note. That's not not where we want it. Something like that. And we're using that D to A again, but it's not just focused on that. It's not, it's okay. We can overuse that. I like that interval quite a bit. This just works for my ears, you know? You can call it my style if you want. That, that A to D interval, A sharp to D sharp. Drop in that. Hit this base. Wonder Range for the same thing. Would have been unison. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we can. We might drop this down an octave, though. What if we put it... Like that. Mm-hmm. And this actually makes me want to do this for this whole bass line, is give it that octave. Because that sounds great. Come on. I want to go over here so I can't screw up the timing. And... Uh... Give it the old blip. Give it the old blip. It's been blipped. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. Turn it into a song chat. Get another round of this. This is gonna be our, our drop where everything drops out and it's just our bass. And we'll rebuild. Why is it looping in such a weird place? I don't have it set up to. All right. Now, let's see. I'm just going to give this another listen. I know we just listened to it, but I want to see if I can figure out what to, what else to, to add to this other progression here, and then we can try to turn it into an actual like song, potentially. Let's just record some stuff on here. Uh, 
save that. Do the old choppy chop. And again. So what I think we're gonna do is this super triumphant lead that's going on literally everything right now is uh, we will, when we get to this part in the song, in the construction, so is uh, this will cut out and it'll just be like the bass and maybe the kick and the hi-hat and then we will slowly introduce these instruments until we have the, and it'll just be like that this loop and it'll just build up on this loop until we have this huge triumphant, like victorious sounding lead. And then we'll go back to the, the minor key part. Um, like, like this stuff, but I'll probably, uh, when we return to it, I'll probably tweak the baseline here so that we won't have this, these little like walkie, that stuff, they'll like do 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 do. It'll probably just be like and be a lot more like driving and and like downbeat focused on even that uh, the bass line that had previously been providing these these little walkie bits. That's the rest of my mate. Um, so yeah, I think that's I think that's where we're going, and I think we're in a good place with this. I'm excited. Um, we've got a lot done so far today. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see, let's see. I'm trying to decide if I would like to keep on working on this track or if my brain is tired and I want to play a game. We have three folks in the chat right now. What do you all think? Should I keep working on this? Or should I switch to a game? Music or game? Ye isn't a choice near in time. We have music or game. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, game. Giselle votes game. Okay. Okay. Maybe we'll switch to a game. Maybe we'll switch to a game. Ye is always a choice. I don't know if ye is a choice, but yeet is a choice. We can always yeet the whole stream. Uh, what do you say we switch to some gaming? We've been going for several hours. I've gotten we've gotten a lot of work done. No, I don't want to do more Hotline Miami today because uh, I I don't want to do that as like a, a gorilla or a surprise. I want that to have de dedicated streams. So, uh, I can do DVD. Yeah, I do. I do like some DVD, and I think there's an event going on in DVD that I need to uh, I need to do. Let's, so I'm gonna make sure we're saved. And I know we're saved in the right place because I did it earlier. Save project. Let's let's do some DVD. I'm gonna take us to my Zatsu screen for a little bit while I get this set up. And yeah, we can we can kill some teens. So I'm gonna close out Reaper. And just like that, look at how much more smoothly I'm moving. Reaper, for some reason, was like lagging the hell out of my model today, which is new. That hasn't happened before. So I'm going to take my DAW uh, uh, and we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to glitch out because I got to stand up. Uh. Oh, oh, the face, the face that I froze, oh gosh, the face that I froze on was really funny. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay. So, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see how to do Dead by Daylight. First, I need steam. Steam. I gotta move chat up here so I can see it while we're in the game. Okay. And then, let's find it. Library. I have so many games. There it is, Dead by Daylight. Let's play some Dead by Daylight. Oh, there's a new archives. It's, I didn't realize. I know there's a Valentine's Day event, but I didn't realize there was a new archives. is loading. Let's see. That's all set. Let's do some of this. And then... What? And I'm just updating our game screen here. Get this going. We want a bit of daylight. Okay. All right, that's working. That's good. That's good. That. Uh, yeah, that's weird, but that's okay. Uh, OBS is so weird, you guys. <sighs> yeah, there's. I, I think there's a Valentine's event in Dead by Daylight, isn't there? Um, or were those items that you were sharing with me, Giselle? I thought those were Valentine's items. Are those from the new tome? Oh my God! Yes, Bubba. Best boy. Uh, right, we're playing. Oh my god. Dead by Daylight is so loud. Dead by Daylight. And there. Okay. So. That. That is 
is weird. Um, I see what I need to do. Did that work? No. Oh. Uh -huh. Sorry, I'm just trying to configure my game capture. OBS is being a butt. I like this new music. We had Dead by Daylight that you can't hear yet. Yeah, here I'm gonna I'm gonna exit studio mode in OBS and we're just gonna go to the game screen and we can figure it out together. How's that sound? That'll be more fun. Yeah, so there is an event. It's called Moonlight Burrow. Oh my god, stop giving me blood points! I need to get in the game! Alright, here we go. We're gonna go to the game. Alrighty. It's working now. It wasn't working before. I'm not sure why it's working now, but in studio mode it was all screwy. And like, the game was stretched out and like distorted. Wow, I am... I'm lagging with this running. Let's, uh... Let's see if I can turn down the graphics settings, because they're, like, all the way up right now. Let's just pop it to low. That's better. A little bit. Um, let's see if we can get away with medium. We can probably get away with medium, huh? I'm so used to ultra- oh, yeah. So much better. Okay, yeah. Good. So we'll, we'll play on medium. That's fine. You gotta make sacrifices to stream, you know, you know? Is there is there lag now? I think we should be okay now. Coconuts plays on 720. Well, I can't change the bitrate in the middle of the stream. And the stream's set up for 1080. I'd have to restart the stream. Um, and I don't want to do that. It looks smooth. Good, 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 yeah. So I just turned down the graphics settings. I think we're good. All right, let's, uh, killer is in bonus, so we're gonna go killing again. Let me update the stream, actually, first. Um, how do I do that while we're live? I can just, I think, if I go into Twitch, I can edit stream info. Playing DBD now. Play music. Now we're killing teens. Dead by daylight. Uh, and there. All right. Nice. It looks like stream info has been updated. So now we can do some gaming. Tab into here. And yes, DVD, the oral surgery recovery arc. That's what we're doing now. Um... Oh, it looks like we gotta. I gotta fix your your audio. All uh, right. So I want you guys to hear "Dead by Daylight." Can you hear "Dead by Daylight"? It looks like you can't, which I'm not sure what to do about. Mm 
Hmm. Hmm. Obius, why are you so bad at audio? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, I can hear DVD fine. I just would like for you guys to be able to hear the game that I'm playing. Um. Which, it's just, it's just not capturing my desktop audio. What if we add a new desktop audio? Ah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. No, that didn't fix it. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure why OBS is not capturing the audio. That's frustrating. Uh, let's see. Desktop 2. That's what we'll call it. Uh, all righty. I think now you can hear it. Oh, you know what? I'm a I'm a dingus. You could hear it the whole time. I was tabbed out, and so it the audio was stopping because I was tabbed out of the game. That's what was happening. You can hear Dead by Daylight. And I've got my BGM muted now. Okay. Is the level is the level okay? Can you hear it okay now? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so silly. Silly VTuber. Silly VTuber breaks her stream. Ah. I wonder is that setting so that it plays the audio when I tab out? Yeah, we want mute focus off. There we go. Now I can tab. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it's night music for the night. So it's like medieval, you know? Um, yeah. So let's see. I think I have way too many blood points to earn any blood points right now. Oh, no. I can play some games. Let's see. So uh, what... What killer should we play? As you can see, I play a lot of Dead by Daylight. I have uh, prestiged all of the killers, and I actually have adept on all of the killers and all of the survivors. <laughs> uh, yeah. So who who do you want me to who do you want me to play? Who do you want me to play? know if I'm cracked at DVD, but I'm not bad. I'm not bad. Um, let's play... My, I don't even know who my best killer is anymore, because I've played all of them so much. Like, and it probably used to be Nurse, but the, the Nurse changes are live, and I haven't played. Um, I might have, if I have Tombstones, I could play Tombstone Myers. That's pretty funny. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see what I've got. Well, I have a bunch of tombstones. I have only one fragrant hair. Do I have any offerings? Any wards? No. I have no wards. That sucks. Um, let's see. So instead of the hair, we could use this hair to just get us a bunch of, bunch of whatever. Let's, let's see. Could use the hair bow. Oh, I could play twins. Nobody ever expects twins. Twins is fun. Um, let's 
Let's see. Yeah, let's uh, let's do a game as Myers to warm up at least. Cause I haven't played this for a while. We're gonna use this to give us some some evil within charge power. What have I got here? Lethal Pursuer, that's good. Trail of Torment, that's good. Ah. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I just have a ton of detection. That's great. Okay. Let's do this. <coughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna kill some teens with our boy Mike. Let's go, Mike! Oh, wow, this is the first time that they've, uh... I've experienced this new matchmaking thing, too. Where you can, like, mess around with your killer. Well, like, settings while you're searching for a match. We're just gonna go in. Tell you what, it's weird playing this with a, a light on my face. It's a little bit... A little bit funky. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, we got another another Twitch streamer in here. XX Olivier or Olivier. We'll see who's the better Twitch streamer. Honestly, probably that guy. Cause uh, yeah, I've I've never streamed this before, and I haven't played it for a long time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Justin in my seat to get ready for some hardcore gaming action. Oh, I hope they're not. I hate when people teabag in this game. It's so. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What does this do? What does this do? Uh, so much stuff happening in that item. I have no idea what the, the event is. He is. It says there's nine days left, so I'm gonna have to grind to get the event items. I have to play some of this. Fight with all you have! Yes, I will! I will! I will! Uh, I mean, it's less fighting and more killing. I could stream the grind, actually. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Maybe I'll just do, like, a surprise DVD stream and just, like, grind the crap out of the event. I didn't even pick any... Oy vey. I'm so silly. I didn't pick anything to, to grind on for this match where... Wow, we are... That's interesting. I am so laggy. This is bad. So laggy. Why is it like this? I mean, it's because I'm streaming, clearly, but... I was not anticipating... Hello! Oh, this is not playable. I don't want to DC. But, like, yikes. Can I change? Oh! Oh! It suddenly has improved! Hello! Thanks for all the juice. I don't think they know I can see them. There! Do, 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 
do do I just remembered I have a tombstone. Oop. This lag, though, is killing me. Oh my, what is happening? It's so bad. Uh, oh my god, hold on. Can I... It still is, this is like, yeah, I've hit one person once and they've got like all these gens done because it's just, I can't, I can't play. It's just so laggy. This is much better though, all of a sudden. spending the time to cleanse the totems even though I don't have anything on the totems well this match is a total bust I don't know if there's lag switching I think that it's just laggy because of streaming keep in mind I've never streamed this before so it makes sense that I wouldn't know how bad it was gonna get Because it doesn't seem like lag switching. It just seems like the game is broken. What happened? That should not have hit me. I'm sorry. Oh boy, this game is a total bust. So yeah, I feel like I might need to turn my uh, encoding down to 720 to stream this game effectively, because this is, like, Major League not playable. Streamer. <laughs> so 
Sucker. Mm, they're all at the other gate. Oh, look at this lag. Yeah, I gotta play something else. This game is not gonna work today, unfortunately. Oh, we killed one. Let's see if we can charge up and, like, surprise kill somebody else if they're, like, fucking around. Nah. The person with juice left left. Bummer. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Yes, yes. Kill TTV and they realize the game that I'm playing. Alright, yeah, so, uh, I definitely can't play this today. Um... I'm just gonna say yes, because they seem like good sports. Had a lot of fun. Alrighty, so, uh, Dead by Daylight. Not gonna work. It's lag by lag light. What other games do I have? What could we switch to? What could we switch to that's maybe a little easier on my system? Steam. What could we play? What could we play? Ba, 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 ba. You know what it's time for? It's time for getting over it with Bennett Foddy. Well, games can be a thing. It's just this this game is just too resource intensive, you know? Well, although I have been going for like what, four hours? Let's play a little bit of Getting Over It. I want to play Getting Over It. That sounds like fun. Let's, uh... So that's not working. So we're gonna... Let's update our stream again. Edit stream info. DVD was laggy, so we're getting over it. Climbing the mountain. Eh, we don't need any more tanks. We're fine. And let's get that going. And we'll update our OBS here. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. And so we got that. And where's the text? Getting over it. All right, getting over it. We're gonna play some getting over it. Uh, I've played this game extensively. Let's, uh, turn on the sound. All right. 
anxiety. Nice. Gonna turn it up a little bit more. How's that? How's that? too loud. And this game we can have some some BGM as well. Oh, where did it go? There. How's that? Everything sound okay? I'm gonna start a new game. And we're just gonna climb this mountain. If you uh, if you need the volume adjusted or anything, let me know. We can tweak stuff. So you can see I have a golden pot. I haven't played this in a long time, but I have played it for many hours. Oh wow, this is lagging too. I've If you deleted your homework the day before it was due, as I have. Or if you left your wallet at home, you have to go back after spending an hour in the If you want some money at the casino, you can put all your winnings on red, but it came up black. If you got your best shirt dry clean, Yeah, I just need to download more RAM. That's clearly, clearly the issue. Actually, hold on. I think I can... There It's just like life. Bennett's gonna save our mistakes. Oh, oh. You can tell I haven't played this for a while. Start sexy hiking, you're standing next to this dead tree that blocks the way to the entire rest of the game. Oh, the lag spike! Ouch! Never got past it. Prod and poke at it, exploring the limits of your reach and your strength, trying to find a way up and over. And there's a sense of truth in that lack of confidence. Most obstacles. Of course, furniture is laggy. You can be completely confident in your ability to get through them once you have the correct method or the correct equipment or just by spending enough. This game. People make a big deal about this game. I find it so relaxing. It's just, it's just your mouse, you know? Just moving the mouse, having a good time, relaxing. It's great. It's great stuff. Can I go lower? Yeah. Bad. And that makes the game uniquely frustrating. But I'm not sure Jezero intended to make a frustrating game. The frustration is just essential to the act of climbing, and it's authentic to the process of building a game about it. A funny thing happened to me as I was building this map. I'd have an idea for a new obstacle, and I'd build it, test it, and it would usually turn out to be unreasonably hard. But I couldn't bring myself to nope. make it easier. It already there felt we go. my inability to get past the new obstacle was my fault as a player rather than as a builder. Imaginary mountains build themselves from our efforts to climb them. And it's our repeated attempts to reach the summit that turns those mountains into something real. 
Ah, oh, working so much better. You're building with ideas. And that can be like working with quick sets of men. You mold your ideas into a certain shape that can be played with. And in the process of playing with them, they begin to harden and set until they're immutable, like rock. And at that point, you can't change the world. Not without breaking it into pieces and starting fresh with new ideas. For years now, people have been predicting that games would soon be made out of prefabricated oh, objects. Oh no! For the most part, that hasn't happened, because the objects in the stores are trash. I don't mean they look bad or that they're badly made, although a lot of I would be talking, but Bennett's I just mean, monologuing non-stop here. As soon as you put it in the scene. Things are made to be consumed and used in a certain context. And Once I think what Bennett has to say in this game is pretty good, you know? He's like, uh... In the context of technology, those moments are He's very philosophical. My mouse cord got caught on my desk. And now vastly outnumbers and outweighs the things that are fresh and untainted and unused. When everything around us is cultural trash, trash becomes the new medium, the lingua franca of the digital age. And you can build culture out of trash. But only trash culture. B games, B movies, B music, B philosophy. Maybe this is what digital culture is. A monstrous mountain of trash, the ash heap of creativity's fountain. A landfill with everything we ever thought of in it. No! I usually have no trouble with orange hell. And here I am, I've fallen twice. 3D models of breakfast, Gen X's fanfic novels, scan magazines, green screen Shia LaBeouf, fan stuff scenes on Lively. Facebook's got lifelike bots with unbranded adverts and candid shots of Kanye and Taylor Swift mashups. Car crash, epic failed chips, Russian dash cam vids, discussions of McRibs, discarded, forgotten, unrecycled, muddled. Rotten. You know, I just realized Bennett Foddy says GIF Everything instead of GIF. About six seconds, until some newer thing beckons and we hit refresh. And there's years of persevering, disappearing into the pile, out of style, out of sight. Alright, we got furniture down. Context, it's tempting to Ooh, friendly maybe. That's gentle, that lets you churn through it, but not earn it. Why make something demand what? if it just gets piled up in the land? I mean, this game is tagged psychological horror on Steam. Maybe that's because, uh... Maybe that's because... He calls them Jif. He's still talking. Now everyone's turned off by that. They want to burn through it quickly. A quick fix for the fickle. Some tricks for the clicks of the feckless. If that's not you, you're an acrobat. Oh, jeez. So many. Now I know, most likely you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch, while some dude with 10 million views does it for you. I'm not a dude, Bennett, and I do not have 10 million views. I am so rusty. I can't believe I'm falling at Orange Hell. That's like, become so easy for me. But maybe it doesn't have to be approachable. What's the feeling like? Ooh. Are you stressed? Ooh. I guess you don't hate it. You got this far. Feeling frustrated. It's underrated. He's still talking. An orange. His sweet juice. Ah, finally, the orange. That's so verbose, Bennett. I only want the bitterness. It's coffee. It's grapefruit. It's licorice. There it is. That's how to do orange hell, y'all. Just zip right up. That's the easiest way. Whoa. It feels like we're closer now. Composer and timer, designer and user. So one of the really great things about this game, listen to Bennett's voice right now. He sounds like he's much closer to the microphone, and it he gets like more and more intimate with the mic and like gets like whispery and like gets like really close to the mic the further up the mountain you get and he talks about how like playing through a difficult challenge creates a bond between the creator of a game and the player of a game and it's just like this neat use of uh neat use of his narration and the actual recording and audio processing of his narration to express an emotional point in the game. It's, it's neat.
He's a smart guy. He's good at games. Good at making games. It means a lot to me that you've come this far, endured this much. Every wisecrack, every insensitivity, every setback you've forgiven me is a kingly gift that you've given me. You know, we've had no no wisecracks or negging or anything from Bennett this whole time. We've just been cruising, waiting for him to shut up. Even though we fell a couple of times. Hello, bucket old friend. We have the same taste. You yeah, so it. here, listen, listen. It's not ambition. It's ambition's opposite. Listen to how, and like, oh, nah, 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 nah. he's gotten. He's almost, like, sexy. So I put this snake in for you. He, like, gets all close to the mic. And he's like, oh, I love you, gamer. I love you for playing my game. Whoa! That's not what we wanted at all. We gotta get up the bucket. There it is. Up the bucket. And up the ice cliff. Have you thought about who you are in this? Are you the man in the pot, Diogenes? I use hand. I use the top of his hammer. I think not. Where your hand moves, the hammer may not follow. Nor the man. Nor the man's hand. In this here is will. Come his intent. The embodied resolve in his upheld ascent. Not quite pulling it quite right. There it is. There we go. We made it. Alright, and look, we're at the shopping cart. We're up at the top. Now, we gotta just climb the tower. And... See how he, see how whispery he gets? It's so seductive. Oh, oh, my mouse cord just keeps on getting caught on my desk. Which didn't happen last time I played this, and I've definitely played this on this desk before. I feel like I should play this sometime with my, uh, my hand tracking. So you can see how crazy my hand movements are. Stop getting stuck. There it is. I just had to hold the mouse cord with one hand and play the game with the other hand. And we Come on. Come on, pot man. There it is. That's the game. We beat it. Done. Getting over it. That was a long run for me. 13 minutes, that's long. But we made it, we made it, we made it. Do we wanna go again or do we wanna wrap up and raid? Now that we've, we've made some music, we uh, did a terrible game of, of lag by daylight. 
and uh, we cleared getting over it. Koki's collabing with somebody. Hmm. Well, I've raided Koki a whole bunch of times. I don't really want to raid Koki again. Um, it feels weird. Feels feels like too much. But uh, let's see if anybody I know is around. Mm, no, nobody I know is around. But let's. Uh, I'm gonna look for somebody to raid. How about that? Let's see if we can find somebody to raid. Which dot TV and we would like to go to browse and let's go to there. Oh, oh, Ron is live. And he's playing games, like we're playing games. Oh no, this is an ad. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I'm gonna send y'all to Ron, who is a, another VTuber who does music production. It looks like he's doing music. So you can check out Ron. Um, he's pretty cool, he's pretty chill. I, uh, I like his stuff. And I've watched him a bit. So let's... Let me steal his his thing. Let's go to a just chatting while I get this together. Instead of sitting here on getting over it. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now I can mute the desktop so I can hear Ron. And let me copy his thing. All right, so we're going to raid Rod. He is a super chill guy, and he's making music right now. And hopefully you find a new cool streamer. So, I will catch you. We'll probably stream some games tomorrow. I'll try to get my Dead by Daylight stuff together so that we can stream some Dead by Daylight and it won't totally break. And, uh, yeah. Other than that, have a fantastic night. And we'll maybe stream some games tomorrow, like I said. And I'll probably do more Hotline Miami on Wednesday on the scheduled stream on Wednesday. That'll probably be, we'll, we'll finish Hotline Miami 1. But you all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Oh no, I can't raid Rod. It won't let me raid Rod. So much for that plan. <laughs> Oh no. Uh Oh we can raid we can raid uh we can raid Coyote Gundam. He hangs out in our chat sometimes. Ah. Alright, here we go. We're raided. Take care, everybody. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow, maybe, and definitely on Wednesday. Bye.